So I am Samir. I am uh, the director of Earth Management and Cash Tree, and I look forward to hosting you for this webinar today. So joining us today is Umang. Umang Singh Chauhan. He is in charge of merchant uh, solutions at NPCA across all the UPI products today, and he has a rich industry experience of uh, more than 17 years across multiple banks and similar ecosystems. So thanks, thanks a lot uh, for uh, for joining Umang today. We also have Akshat Kani. He is a part of the strategy team. Uh, thanks, thanks Umang. We also have Akshat Kani from who is a part of the strategy team at Jar. And as you would, uh, some of you would know, Jar is one of the leading uh, digital sailing platform today, uh, which is based on digital gold loans at this point of time. Akshat works directly with the founders and on the, all the new initiatives. And uh, we wanted to understand from him on uh, you know how you pay auto pay in tax as well as today in the in the current ecosystem. So thanks, thanks a lot, Akshat, to be here, and welcome to this webinar. So, so to start off with, uh, you know, just among since uh, both you and Akshat are here, we kind of wanted to start off talking about the UPI landscape in the country. And, you know, to start off with, uh, currently we have the penetration of UPI in India is more than 30%, 30 crore uh, of, of the population have access to UPI at this point of time. So what we, what we wanted to understand uh, today was, uh, like, we have seen tremendous success of UPI, among, especially among the P2M uh, segment in, in the country today, right? Uh, like, do, just wanted to kind of understand your thoughts on, you know, what has made that such a huge success, right? Uh, we traditionally expected it to be more of a P2P use cases to start off with, but then it kind of became a much bigger player of the P2M market at this point of time. So, uh, just curious to understand your thoughts on how, how this uh, has evolved over the years. So, uh, see, um, UPI, when it started, it started uh, more as a P2P mechanism and uh, P2M was very initially exploring, uh, it was explored. But now in today's scenario, when we are doing almost uh, more than 7 billion transactions month on month, uh, UPI, P2P and P2PM, uh, P2M uh, share is almost 50%. P2M is even crossed 50% now. and. Uh, See, I would like to give the credit of this to uh, the ecosystem players. NPCI has just made the platform of UPI. Banks, fintechs, okay, uh, these are the players who have taken UPI to the inroads and they have made uh, UPI what it is today. So the ecosystem which has been created by players like Google Pay, Phone Pay, uh, Paytm, Team, and the banks who have created an acceptance infrastructure and as well as issuance infrastructure and that is why you see that uh, now at any online merchant UPI is almost 65 to 70 percent even more than that at some and in offline also we can see uh, almost at 30 percent is where we are today in payments. That's a, that's a great point of Kumang. like you know like uh, it is one of those initiatives from the government from RBI in general which has uh, so, which has actually taken up across the ecosystem, right? There's so many players in the industry right now who are so much invested in the success and growth of UPI at this point of time. On, on the same note, Akshat, you know, just wanted to understand, right? From a JAR's perspective, right? When you look at UPI in general, not uh, auto pay, in UPI in general, right? What you are looking at probably is 30 crore uh, Indian population at the tip of your fingertips from a growth perspective, right? So, would you, would you want to share some thoughts around, you know, how do you see this massive adoption of UPI kind of impacting? Jar's use case in general from your company's perspective. How do you see what what do you see the potential for you for you for you guys there? Right. Um, I think UPI as a use case has been a very big uh, equalizer in terms of you know, the opportunities that it provides. Uh, typically, saving and investment platform, if you look at them, they involve take you through a very very complicated process to even get going, and that is not something which the common Indian can go through. It's a very difficult task for them to go through the entire process. Uh, credit card penetration, which is like a very popular way of payments in the upper strata of the society, barely has 3% penetration if you look at it in terms of a larger audience base of the country. And that's what we see it as, like savings and investment as a particular thought also is something which resonates across the spectrum, across wealth levels, gender levels, anything, right? But it's just that there have been so many gatekeepers in the sense of way you want to make payments towards it, the way you want to make transactions for it, be it in terms of a merchant transaction, in terms of a peer transaction, 
it's been very difficult historically and i think that's where the beauty of upi comes in that the simplicity that the ease and that the breaking down of barriers and that what has been the reason for our success story as well and that is something around upi that we see as a very very big and powerful change so so uh, uh, akshat so i would jar traditionally started off with upi right unlike other players in the industry which kind of moved from different payment modes to upi i think you had this uh, very interesting you were at the cusp of this innovation when you just came and picked up upi and then that's how we just started uh, moving right so that's that's a very very interesting to hear uh, Uh, Umang, you you also mentioned that as of today, right? Mo- moving from the UPI to UPI auto pay side of things, right? We have uh, close to seven to eight million mandates that we are creating on a on a regular basis, right? Uh, can can you can you walk us through, you know, uh, from UPI to UPI auto pay, right? How does that 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 thought process process kind of started within NPCI? Like, what made you think that uh, UPI has happened, right? It's been a success. Now let's move it to other facets of the business, other facets of the problem statements, other industry typically faces. Right? If you can just kind of walk us through uh, those aspects of things and how, how how it has grown over the over the years, rather months, I would say, it will be great for the audience to also understand that. Sure, sure. So uh, when UPI started, uh, UPI was uh, uh, only for uh, one-time payments, and there was a demand from ecosystem. Uh, for a recurring mechanism in UPI, because users have an inherent need to make payments that are either one-time or recurring in nature. Recurring in the sense utility bill payments, insurance, all such mechanisms are there in place, wherein the concept of billing cycle, last date of payment, penalty in case of a delay or a default, that is there. But to have a better control for such payments and have hassle-free processes, users are opting for. were actually looking for something of a recurring nature and although there are uh, payment modes available like nash e nash si on cards and net banking but there was something more required to and where the customer wanted a better user experience ease of onboarding and that is why uh, there was the ecosystem demand of recurring payments on upi as well and uh, in july 2020 we launched this uh, initiative and uh, today we are at a stage where we are uh, doing almost 8 to 7 to 8 uh, million mandates every month we have close to 50 million active mandates as of now and uh, success rate is also as pa- at par with uh, the upi success rate so this has been the story for uh, and we are exploring new use cases in it apart from the regular uh, subscription and other uh, use cases So you mentioned around other other payment modes that people are specifically from a recurring payment perspective, right? And, and, and like you said, right, there are certain advantages of coming with UPI Auto Pay. Immediate advantages of coming to UPI Auto Pay. Uh, obviously, like every payment mode has their own benefits. But if you if you have to just kind of talk about UPI Auto Pay's specific inherent benefits, right? Uh, what are the few things you will probably want to want to share with us? See, first and foremost, like Akshat also said, uh, ease, uh, the ease of onboarding, the ease of uh, revoking modifying a mandate and it's all just at your fingertips uh, there nothing paper based this is all mobile based you can uh, be sitting at the luxury of your home and do all these transactions which are very complex otherwise if you want to do okay uh, this also has a better success rate when it comes to uh, paper based uh, mandates wherein signature mismatch and all those things operational issues were there so this product has overcome all those uh, things uh, then other than that uh, this also caters to a strata of society uh, where the onboarding is completely paperless like for a home loan i will not say that this would be a better product because anyways person is filling up in other form he can fill up a mandate form but in an ott where i'm uh, buying a subscription for some entertainment purpose i would not want to go for a uh, process of maybe a card registration or a net banking i would want something very quick and that is why uh, ubi auto pay clicks there so uh, all the payment modes are right and uh, as per the uh, target audience they are serving they are uh, placed very well so but uh, upi auto pay is uh, is placed where the target audience wants a quick onboarding and ease of uh, setting up a mandate 
said you can give some examples of this segment. You mentioned OTT as a you know as a primary use case, and that is actually very very much true. Right? We 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 see a lot of uh, requests coming from OTT and similar platforms. But what are the specific segments that you are targeting from a UK or UK perspective today, from an industry industry segment? See, India is uh, not especially a very subscription based. Uh, society unlike us where people have subscription for almost uh, most of the regular services which they use they are ready to give mandates to the merchants india uh, we don't see that as of now but uh, things are changing uh, apart from the regular uh, use cases like ott bill payments insurance uh, investments uh, we are now exploring new use cases like uh, grocery subscription so and uh, media subscription people are my buying media on a subscription basis through upi auto pay we are also exploring uh, uh, like there are aggregators in uh, system society aggregators which aggregate all the regular uh, vendors of the society in one app so we are trying to integrate upi auto pay in those apps where in you're paying anyways for your paper wala sabji wala on a regular basis why don't why can't we bring those on uh upi out of it so these are the new uh, areas which we are exploring one is uh, what akshat and their team are doing a very good work on the savings side so one is investments where is regular your sip and all those things goes on but this is these are the new areas which they have explored so this is recent, so recently uh, uk uh, npc kind of came up this increase limit of 5000 to 15000 right And that kind of made a lot of impact across the industry on on how you pay or to pay was kind of taken up. Uh, so uh, so I have a poll question for the audience as well. Uh, you know, just to kind of under, get a sense of uh, from the audience and all the attendees. Uh, you know, what is the use case? Whether they actually been impacted? Uh, you know, from from the audiences who are here. So just request the attendees to have a quick uh, you know do a quick poll on that that specific. Point. Just give a give a minute for the attendees to vote. So that's great. So we just did this uh, poll, and we saw that around you know. 60% of the audiences have kind of mentioned that you know increase the use case from 5000 to 3000 actually had a positive impact on the business uh, so that's that's a great uh, you know validation of uh, again yes. the, the audiences are from a very specific side but that's a great validation of the use cases that uh, that has happened recently so on, on, on the same point uh, akshat right uh, what was the impact of this 5000 to 3000 gate on on jars use case can you just throw maybe throw some light on that as well oh so like i said like people might be aware we are a platform which builds on the idea of building a savings habit right so daily weekly monthly all those things so by upping the limit on the 15000 piece it's allowed us to explore new business lines in which we can explore upi auto pay like people can there's of course we can push more towards goal based savings because people typically for goals they want to save bigger amounts and with the ease of with upi that comes in certainly becomes much easier Uh, that's something which has certainly helped us a lot. But this has also helped us improve the existing product in the sense that a lot of people typically would want to save more on a weekly or a monthly basis, also, and it's allowed us to explore those options with a larger ticket size. So the limit increase has certainly been a very, very positive move for us. And apart from apart from the fifteen thousand limit, right? There are a lot of new features that have recently been introduced, right? The intent flow. Uh, you know, non-revocable flag. Uh, probably non-revocable flag is not been very relevant to your business at this point of time. Uh, but then we have this QR-based checkout, and the, in general, we talk about the success rates being easier to track, both from a creation and debit perspective, right? So, from from a business perspective, what are the specific? And again, with the thought that uh, it is very specific segment that we are talking about here, uh, what were the key features of UPay or to pay that your company is kind of looking at uh, in uh, looking at with great promise? Or you know, has been uh, seen a lot of success with that this point of time. Right. So one thing which has really helped us is the way and the speed at which onboarding, especially with UPI Auto Pay, works. It's it's absolutely in a flash. Like uh, we promise and continue to promise that someone can start their savings journey in as little as forty five seconds. 
and if you process that to just look at a NATS mandate to set up a recurring payment, it probably will take you about a minute to just understand what's going on on your screen. Uh, it just becomes very overwhelming, right? And for us, the idea comes from the fact that we want to make savings a simple and joyful journey, which is where something like a UPI auto pays auto. Uh, the onboarding becomes very seamless because firstly it's not very unfamiliar to the daily UPI payments that someone makes right uh, in the sense that we've all heard the numbers around the adoption which UPI has seen especially across city tiers and the onboarding flow around UPI auto pay is simple you just enter your pin you have a statement along how much can be debited from whom and what frequency right so the onboarding is something which has certainly been very very useful for us because even if you look at graduates from say a tier two or tier three city, it sometimes becomes where they 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 are not always the most tech literate audience which comes in, right? And for them to make this so simple, it's a beautiful play. And similarly, I think the high success rates is also something which we really enjoy. Uh, we've been working on a lot of enhancements on our own also to help boost the auto pay success rates. Uh, so those are two things which are certainly very helpful for us. Makes sense. Okay. So, so to, to almost earlier point, right? I mean, India as a country, we're not really a successful economy yet. I think what you mentioned that the seamless and the joy of doing fast transactions here is something that uh, kind of helps India move go towards a subsequent economy. I think it's also about, there are multiple factors here, right, why we are not in a subsequent economy. It is around trust, it is around the ease of convenience, it is around when will, when will the money come to account, you know, basic question that comes to people, right. So, UP Auto Pay has been a great, uh, you know, level up for us in that field to, you know, take us on par on global, how, global, how the world kind of does uh, recurring payments as a startup, right. Oh, one, one question to you on this piece, right? So when, when you started off with these new features like non local flag and a few others, right? So what are the thought process that you guys had behind it? Like again, it's a it's a major impactful piece from a lending perspective. I was talking to a few merchants today and it was like non revocable ho gaya to mera trust aage. i mean i can i can actually go to upay auto pay for all my loan lending needs right so just wanted to understand from both from an npsa perspective and um, your perspective what was the thought process where uh, you know some of these features came from and what are some of the features that you're planning to bring into the ecosystem maybe say three months or six months down the line so uh, see with the this ease of onboarding and ease of payments on uh, UPI, this was acting as a double-edged sword for some of the use cases, especially where the customer has a liability to pay. So on an OTT platform, I may choose not to subscribe for two months if I am a student and I have exams upcoming, I can maybe pause my uh, subscription or revoke my subscription for that matter. But uh, if I have taken a loan and it is on auto pay, I should, the, the lending uh, uh, partner would not want to give the ease so much easily to the customer to pause or maybe revoke it and that is why there was a demand for this uh, that the revoke option has to be there and the customer can do it but it has to be replaced actually so it is there even in your current uh, the loan which you take otherwise personal loan home loan you can pop, uh, revoke it but you have to replace it with some other payment mode so and that is why we had introduced this uh, revoke option wherein the customer uh, can uh, non revoke option wherein the customer cannot revoke it under the analysis contacted the merchant so he can be revoked only when he contacts the merchant and then that case the merchant can give them some other pay payment mode and then maybe do it so it is just because of the ease was uh, not acting in the favor of the lenders we had to mm -hmm. take this so, so on that note we have a poll for the audience again on the non local flag, I'll just start that poll, and uh, we will just kind of uh, kind of see uh, you know how many of our current uh, you know, customers who are on this call are actually using non local flag. So, so while we are kind of uh, launching the poll, uh, can you also just walk us through some of the other initiatives that uh, you know, uh, which you have, which you think have been extremely impactful from an auto pay perspective in the last few months that has been launched? Okay. So, um, 
the latest uh, in UPI is uh, a credit card linkage to UPI. We had launched it uh, a couple of months back, wherein uh, in uh, today's uh, scenario, there are four banks and one app, which is live. So you can link these four bank credit cards to your e-map and customer can use credit card uh, through a UPI uh, channel. So in India, there are around 70 million cards and there are around 6 million POS machines. But now with linkage of this credit card on UPI, uh, the number of POS machine, which was 7 million, it has now gone up to 150 million because there are 150 million QR in India. So that same credit card can now be used at 150 million outlets. So the usability has gone up. Okay. And uh, with auto pay, if you combine this with an auto pay, uh, as a customer, I would always want uh, these recurring payments to hit my credit card rather than my uh, account. If I am a credit card user, I would want them to hit my account because these are regular payments I have to make. Might as well earn some points onto it. So this is the latest which is uh, going to be there. So it is like uh, right now we only have Eam in this, but in next two to three months time, all major uh, uh, apps will be live on this, and all major credit card issuers will be able to uh, will be live on this. So the users will be able to link their credit cards. So that is one. Second is the uh, linkage of UPI auto pay with the BBPS systems. So wherein BBPS is a platform wherein customer gets uh, customer can has the ease of making regular bill payments. So all bills are at one point and uh, we are linking that with the auto pay. So so that all your bills are presented in a uh, regular fashion to the customer and customer can also offer a UPI auto pay there. So the bill fetch and bill payment all happens in one go. So that is something which is uh, going to be launched. Limits, I'm not very sure because 15,000 is good enough as of now. Uh, in India, we have use cases which are maximum are covered. Even the SIPs and all those use cases can be covered in 15. So I don't see immediate extent of limit, but these are some of the new enhancements in UPI out of which we'll see very soon. That's, that's great to hear. So, so again, a question to both uh, you and uh, Akshat here. Um, and sorry, we, we just got the poll up now for the audiences as well. That they can just kind of talk about the non visibility back there. But just to continue the question, right? We talked about you know lending OTT, we talked about in insurance and investment as a platform. But what are the some of the segments where you think that you know UK auto pay can still make an impact where uh, it has probably not yet reached, right? Because we don't talk about a lot of use cases at this point of time. Uh, but are, are there any specific segments that uh, you think uh, you know you pay auto pay can can aim to achieve in the next say three to six months or something new that should be that, sh that people should start thinking about? So, like I said, grocery is one. We have seen mm -hmm. instant grocery now picking up very fast. So that I see one as a use case. The other uh, area which is uh, currently under penetrated is uh, subscription to. Uh, foreign media so wall street journal financial times a lot of these uh, media subscription at least in metro and uh, tier one cities people are subscribe want to subscribe to these kind of uh, media subscriptions but uh, they only offer cards as of now and if i don't have a card which is which has an international acceptance i will i'm not able to subscribe to those so that is one area where i see that in next year to six months time uh upi auto pay will have a deep impact. Uh, my understanding on this is that anything which involves receiving or giving money, Autopay makes a very good play over there. Uh, because not a lot of people understand that you know UPI Autopay can also have variable amounts being deducted on a frequency. That you take a mandate up to a certain amount and anything under and equal to that is what you can debit. So any transaction which can be, uh, you know, like a jar only, right? We use it for a roundhouse feature, which is like basically you keep investing spare change. And this could be gener generalized for so many things, like the khatas which you keep at your Kirana stores, those could be some place which can probably consider something like a UPI or to pay. 
uh, i think insurance is one place which upi auto play pay can play a very big role because insurance as a business has always seen a very high drop off or low uptake because of the high ticket sizes which exist there and if you're able to fractionalize them in some sense like say you paying daily weekly or monthly towards a insurance premium i think that's a beautiful play which upi auto pay can have um UPI auto pay i think in general like for subscription businesses makes a lot of sense as uh, opang has also been talking about right because it kinds of helps you make sure that there's no revenue leakages as to happening with kind of you know if you keep doing manual transactions you know you're on a fixed rate you are going to get your money so like i said anywhere which involves a receiver and a giver uh, UPI auto pay makes a great play that's a, that's a great point So, so you had started off with UPI Auto Pay, right? So, was it just a coincidence as that it was when Auto Pay was being launched, or or what was the thought process behind just sticking to UPI Auto Pay, not moving to other, uh, you know, recurring payment modes? Can can you share some light uh, on that as well? Right. So, the idea behind Jar was that this is a platform which is for everyone. This is not for someone. Like if you and I were to go and save and invest somewhere, we'd probably go and open a zero dollar account, right? But we wanted to build something which is catering to someone who doesn't even know where to start on zero dollar account. You come, you start saving in the most simplest of asset classes, which is gold, and you go for it, right? Now, if you want to simplify something which is so complicated, you need to have something which is as simple to pay also. and i think we timed it really well in terms of the launch and the growth of upi that as i mentioned earlier that onboarding is such an ease it's a familiar environment that you are entering into if you look at any other transaction modes also the penetration for them is so low that if you think of credit cards 3% penetration bank accounts okay great we've been doing good strides in terms of how many bank accounts we have but the digital connectedness and the familiarity to make digital transactions has only come in after upi right as a country we are very much used to two kinds of apps which is social media which is simply like you scroll or you swipe and also to gaming apps which are like you install and you start playing and our thing was that we want to be a tiktok for the financial world that it's easy to understand easy to use And UPI fits in perfectly over there. Makes sense. That is a great uh, viewpoint. Like you know, TikTok of the payment world. That's an interesting uh, way to put it. Uh, so I think we are nearly upon time. So what we will do is, Umang uh, and Akshay, we can open up uh, the floor for for questions from the audience. We have some questions coming in, and I'm kind of going to read some of them out loud. Uh, you know, and just kind of get your sense on some of these questions. So one of the questions that uh, you know I'm still getting is, uh, and Umang, it's probably more towards you is, uh, are we seeing like recently, like we talked about the five thousand to three thousand increase, right? Are we seeing a need for the ecosystem to go beyond fifteen thousand at this point of time? Right? I think that's a question that I think a couple of people have been asking that question there. Just wanted to get your sense on 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 that. See, uh, like I said before. Uh, in India, the average SIP uh, size is somewhere around eight and a half uh, to ten thousand. Okay, and if you talk about small ticket size loans, so even EMIs of those small ticket size loans fall way under fifteen uh, thousand for a month. And because there is also a, a frequency of as and when presented, so all of these things combined, I don't think that immediate need for going beyond fifteen is uh, required right now. but uh, just for the uh, information of the audience uh, till 15000 it is without pin and beyond 15000 it is on the upi limits which is like 1 lakh and 2 lakhs so with a pin transaction every month although it it will be a little bit uh, cumbersome transaction but with pin it can go up to 1 lakh every month so customer can get a uh, notification of say if it is a 50000 uh, Uh, amount which has to be debited every month, then customer will get a notification. Customer will click on it and will put his pin, and the transaction will go through. But with this, it can go up to one lakh. So without pin, it is fifteen thousand. And I think uh, if if there is a uh, demand from ecosystem, we can always go back to the regulator and uh, get it revised. 
So, so one the other question is that the while uh, you know UPI has been a success in in uh, tier two tier and tier three towns, right? But what are the MPCI's plan to promote UPI auto pay in tier two and three towns? I think we'll touch upon it a bit during our discussion. I just wanted to kind of open the floor, like uh, you know, uh, to, to kind of get more sense. As far as uh, UPI is concerned, I think UPI has. Uh, reached almost tier three, tier four uh, already. Because when I go to my hometown, even a small sabji wala or a paper vendor, everyone is taking payments through UPI, and even P two P payments are there. Uh, when it when you talk about uh, UPI auto pay, auto pay yes, uh, uh, because of the uh, OTT apps now have made inroads in tier two, tier three, and now when they are becoming. Uh, Uh, paid apps, then UPI Auto Pay is going to be there very soon. Uh, also, uh, we are also bringing in lot of fintechs in this. So currently, you see only two three apps which people use for making these payments. Uh, but we, we have there are total twenty five T apps in country, which uh, which customers can use, and there are another five to ten which are going to be. Uh, Launched in next three to six months time, and they will uh, cater to the audience which are there in tier three, tier four. Uh, so, with the help of banks and new fintechs and the apps, we think uh, we'll be able to make it work in uh, tier three and four. Uh, we we have a digital lending customer teams, and one of the question is that if the funds are not present, right? Typically, from a e-nature or paper nature perspective, there are bank charges that can be levied as a legal document, right? So the question is, can we can we do it uh, from a UPI auto pay perspective, right? If there is a someone, uh, if we try to debit funds and it bounces, uh, with the reason saying you know funds not present, can it be taken up as a legal recourse of action on behalf of NBFC as well? Exactly. So as per uh, Payment Settlement Act of uh, Section 25 of Payment Settlement Act, this is uh, treated as a check bounce. So whatever recourse. Uh, you can take, or a merchant can take, in uh, terms of e-nash or any other uh, recurring mode. All are available for UPI as well. And I would also like to add over here that there are uh, total ten attempts within two frequencies is what a merchant can make. Re-attempts, ten re-attempts are allowed in this. So even if you don't, if if you get a uh, not sufficient fund as a reason for, for a decline for the first time, uh, if um, you have a telecalling support. You can ensure that the customer keeps the fund, and you can do these retries so that the ten retries are out between two frequencies. Uh, one more question that we have, and it's really very interesting, right? With the onset of so much cyber crime happening around UPI, uh, one of the questions is: Are there steps that uh, NPCI and RBI kind of taking more from a You you pay auto pay first, but so you pay. I mean, it's it's been there have been cases. There steps are being taken from the regulator and NPC at this point of time. But are we seeing something similar happening from a auto pay perspective as well? So uh, the basic functionality or basic core uh, feature which is there in UPI auto pay is a twenty four hour notification, wherein the issuing bank and the merchant is uh, mandated. To send a notification 24 hours before the debit, when the debit is going to happen, that notification is there to ensure that the customer, if the customer wants to pause, revoke, modify, or if the funds are not there in the account, uh, keep the account funded. So, and that is why that is a mandate which is there, just to ensure. And if the customer thinks that he has not set the mandate to prevent fraud, this notification is really helpful. So that is one. Second, we also do UPI Chalega uh, campaign, which is funded by NPCI and ecosystem players, banks and fintechs, for creating awareness on UPI and UPI auto pay. That not to share your pin, not to uh, uh, provide mandates to non-verified merchants, and all those things. So every year we do this campaign, which is an online campaign and an offline uh, for the consumer awareness. Makes it. I think that's a, that's a great uh, thing. That's a, I mean, from a security perspective, right? Uh, that's a great thing from the audience perspective as well. I think I think one last question is more on the one-time mandates, uh, and uh, and just kind of talking about you know the use. Recently, we did the multi-debit option for one-time mandates. 
so we just want to kind of understand uh, you know the use again it's been we have been talking about some of the use cases in the past right just wanted to get put get some uh, you know parting thoughts on how you see uh, the businesses that you think will be impacted by one time with multiple debit on one time banking so when we launched a uh, one time mandate uh, uh, there was a demand from the ecosystem that uh, we wanted to debit multiple times because sometimes it happens that the product or the service is delivered especially the products are delivered in parts and that is why we want to collect also in parts and uh, that is why we came up with this uh, multiple debits so a simple use case could be uh, when there is a this is this could be against a cash on delivery uh, this thing wherein uh, goods are delivered in parts i have ordered in one bulk five goods and are getting delivered in different time intervals and if there is a block in the account only that amount will be debited for which the good has been delivered so that could be one uh, for cap aggregators they can if, if i if they see a pattern that among books uh, 1500 uh, uh, amount of uh, trips in a month i can give a mandate to them to block 1500 at one time and for the entire month they can keep deducting as and when i use the cap so even the risk is reduced on both the sides so that could be one use case and there are various use cases which we are working on with the ecosystem for this uh, one time mandate uh, at multiple debits so i'll just take one last question if anyone from the audience has any more question and then we can kind of just uh, just uh, you know just uh, close the discussion on on the webinar at this point of time so so there is a question um among on the bbps piece that you mentioned right that uh, like you know and, and i know that there are talks around utms and few other things right so any timeline that you are looking at uh, for this to be you know uh, Launch. I know it's some time away because obviously the agents have to integrate with UPI as a solution itself. But are there any specific uh, focus put from your side on on doing a more formal handshake between these? See, uh, in the in the UPMS, which is a uh, present management uh, uh, system, uh, this is this we have designed in fa- two phases. In first phase, the COUs will go live, wherein the customer can go COU in the sense that uh, ADM, Dean. uh gpe phone pay the cous will go live in first phase where it customer go, can go and register a, a presentment system okay and in phase 2 we are also then making billers live where it customer can go to the billers and uh, make this uh, re- registration uh, so in this way what will happen is that every month the customer will get a reminder one unified reminder for all the bills and in uh, next future we are trying to link it to one payment mode also which could be upi auto pay so that the customer not only gets a reminder of a bill but also the bill gets paid through that so uh, maybe we are looking at uh, uh, in phase manner uh, the launch of upms in next say 1 to 1 and a half months time with uh, at least one or two cous that that's great to hear but i think it brings around a new uh, promise for the industry itself right with what what is side of it uh, upi with vpps and a some lot of similar initiatives from rbi and npci i think it it means a lot for the fintech industry in the country that the regulator has put in so much effort to for us to unify the system uh, at at a, at a larger scale itself um, so so with that uh, you know uh, ubang and akshat i'm like thank you for the time today and all the attendees uh, for attending this uh, webinar 